Welcome everyone, peace and love from the Atlantean Consciousness. This is Grandmaster Thor, covering another very important issue of life. Life, occultism, physical, the non-physical, the mind field of this world. And it really is a mind field. And how can you navigate through that line, mind field? Well, this is a critical uh, understanding that everyone needs to uh, listen carefully and uh, seek guidance. And the problem is you're never really going to be helped by anyone all that much. I mean, one of the reasons I'm so communicative with people is because nobody ever seems to get any help. Mommy and Daddy doesn't have any help. They don't seem to talk to people. You know, they make you go to church or make you do this. And I don't know what's going on in terms of people that seem to be more guided in life. It's almost, you know, if you come from a certain class, you go to a certain school, and I guess you just kind of fit in because you're all part of that. Um, and these kind of people don't generally seem to be in the guild. They have their path as poor as it is. The problem is in life is who do you trust? <laughs> and this is, uh, and the only way ultimately is you really have to go by your inner magical being speaking to you. And this is why it's so critical to use sigils and to wake that inner magical being up, slap them good, get a lot of coffee in them, get them to work. I don't know how many people have been murdered by doctors, and it's really murder because a lot of these operations they know won't work are ineffective, and they could care less. It's a paycheck, and you're just a cadaver. And if you think that's in any way harsh, I haven't been in this life. It amazes me that you know television is filled with good cops, loving doctors, and lawyers that fight for you. When the real world, it's completely the opposite. I mean, I've never met a good doctor. It's a couple okay ones. I've never had a good lawyer. They've all been weak kneed pigs. And don't even mention the filthy, corrupt police that have done absolutely nothing but empower criminals. But I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard, and of course this is again too, what do we know it's true it's not? Am anything I'm telling you through true? Can you trust me? Well, everything in life uh, bears out into some sort of action, and of course does whatever seeds have been planted, does that grow sweet fruit? And you have to judge in your own life. But it amazes me that uh, it appears that uh, people have said that their heroes are doctors. Because after all, when a loved one being connected to that kind of energy and earth that everyone is, which we warn people against, and it's part of life and you stay centered where it is not that much of you. You interact as is needed and should be in proper universal law, but you can't be too committed to it. So you depend on these people and what they do. And um, unfortunately, I've been involved in some, and I follow others, uh, of how doctors kill people and do it for profit. They know operations aren't needed. They know they're not going to work. Uh, but of course, they rationalize in the mind that it will. After all, it can't hurt. And after all, I need that new summer cottage. Amazing how people worship doctors who do virtually nothing to assist you, have no answers, and while everybody else is expected to donate their time and assist the poor and do whatever they can, 99% of your doctors don't do any of that. Have you ever had a doctor say, well, I know you're having a tough time, I'm not going to charge you, here's some free meds, uh, don't worry about it. I've had doctors throw me out of their offices because they no re longer 
take that kind of insurance or it's too much trouble to process that. Not that I was not uninsured after 10 years. Ah, aren't they beautiful? We should thank the doctors. Well, I hope no one here has that kind of opinion. <laughs> I hope that the people that are listening to me are a little smarter than that, not watching ER, the pretty boys saving lives, as long as you're, as long as you have good insurance, daddies. I've had friends thrown out of hospitals that didn't have insurance. <laughs> The hypocritical oath is what I call it. To heal, to not hurt. And of course, there's a place for income. But these people don't have incomes. I lived in an area that had the largest houses. Weren't even the movie stars that lived there, which were known to live in that area. They were the doctors. Every dead body was piled up bags of money in their front yard, showing their gross, gross wealth. So if you don't go to a doctor, and after seriously somehow pulling my back, and you know, I believe it was more of a, uh, a training for me. Oh, you got to have operations, and you're in a lot of pain, but, you know, we'll give you pills for a while as long as you pay me for a big, expensive operation. Operations, back operations. So I've never known a single person who's ever benefited from a back operation. Usually you're in pain for the rest of your life, and those butchers have won in and now broken your electromagnetic field, and they have permanently distorted your physical nervous system, so you'll never heal. <sighs> But they got a new car out of it. Or a new ski lodge. Or money for dope and whores, because that's what doctors are into. So go ahead and trust them with your life. That'll be a fun thing. I'll tell you one guy who trusted the doctors. You ever heard of Grandpa and the Munsters? Mm. Al Lewis. Who was murdered by doctors. Had heart problems. Of course, he was in his 70s. So. Of course, they're going to go in for an angioplasty. And, you know, they do this through your leg, you know. They stick a pipe up through your veins. Quite often, this has major complications and people die from it even though it's also one of the most common operations, and the most useless because they found out that all that doesn't work anyway. All these angioplasts that they make all this money and they get all this personnel and they get very rich from, does absolutely nothing like almost all medical treatments out there that do absolutely nothing, except cost. So they went in and uh, had an angioplast, and it went very badly. Hmm. So badly that... Um, they messed up his whole circulation in his leg. Got gangrene and they had to cut it off. Cut it off. And then later died from all the complications of that. Well, that was a great help to his heart so he would function a little better. And you know, when you have a relative dying in the hospitals, you know you have no right to bring anybody in. You have no right to do anything. You can have, say, little prayers. And the hospital I went to, this you could light incense. You can't bring in other doctors in that hospital because hospitals have to register with the doctor. They have to clarify that that doctor is proper to bring in. And of course, it's a club, isn't it? Except your life is on the line. You're dying, baby. They're murdering your relatives and covering it up. Yeah, ain't that wonderful. <laughs> Let's watch ER again. They're helping so much. I wanted to bring in an acupuncturist. 
Because after they killed my mother and she couldn't get her biorhythms back, her heart beating properly, I knew that she would do it. Oh no. You don't have a right to do that. Oh, those pins could cause bleeding. Said you idiots, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. That is not part of the process because you're too ignorant to know what it is. And of course, the emergency doctor didn't object because he probably didn't object. He said, well, it doesn't have a problem with him because he then is extricated from any legal processes. Even having an attorney call didn't do anything for the big nonprofit hospitals. That the land and towers were donated by movie stars, Frank Sinatra, no less, who certainly didn't go there. When he got sick, he made sure he left Palm Springs and went to Los Angeles to Cedar sinai where they have highly qualified people instead of the butchers that are there. And you can guarantee you'll get in some places the finest care that there is, the finest care to the grave like they did with Linda McCartney and so many other ones that uh, the doctors assisted their death as quickly as they possibly could with all their great expensive technologies. So if you trust a doctor, you're pretty much of a dumb idiot and I hope that you have a coffin waiting for you that you've paid off because maybe they'll even dump you in the street. That'll be the next thing. So, people who have been through these things and don't understand is the who I is who do you trust? You go to a doctor and you go in for a casual operation and there's no such thing as that. And your chances of not coming out alive are pretty high. People don't survive as much as people think they are. When the busiest place in a hospital is guess where? You think it's the admittance? Uh, it's the morgue. I believe it was the late Dr. Mendelssohn, the, the medical heretic. He used to bring all these things to public and you know anytime that doctors are not paid or go on strike guess what happens to the death rate it plummets <laughs> statistically more people are killed by prescription drugs or given by their doctors than anything else in this country so you want to trust these guys don't we when you go in there and they tell you well I had a doctor with my back who told me, I said, well, you know, doctor, can't I benefit from some sort of physical therapy? Should I run and get cut all up? And he looked me straight in the face and said, I have no idea if it can help you. Sounds like lawyer talk to me, because if you put them on the stand there and someone says you could have benefited from that and didn't, well, I don't know. <laughs> You're a doctor, why don't you know? You don't know if there's other treatments other than your clinic, which is based on giving people operations. You don't know anything except what benefits your clinic. You're a piece of meat. And you know, this reality is tough because there it's, you know, your whole life is ruined. If you're fucked up, if you, they mess your back up or you can't walk or you're in horrible pain and they don't want to even give people drugs anymore, well, they've created the system that they work in, just like the police make sure that they have an entire industry based around them. And people like the Los Angeles Police Department that came out against legalized marijuana. Why? Because 70% of the people they arrest, maybe as high as 90%, are arrested on drug and marijuana type charges. So, hey, you put me out of business, man. It's all about me being in business. Well, you can 
expect justice there, can't ya? And do we need to say anything about lawyers who are basically incompetent boobs that never do anything? And of course, there are some classes of lawyers, and of course, it's all a big game. They all get together, they all talk to each other, and of course, there are those who uh, allow to, to lose, and other ones that will not tolerate losing because that's how they make their money. And of course, everybody has to fill up the court system, so. It goes on and on and on, not to mention that they're all paid off for everything else. You know, just, you know, the whole thing goes on and on and on. So uh, here you are in this mess. And if you think it's any different in occultism or anything else, you're a fool. And we've seen that with all the frauds that for the many years that have talked about these things and the great empowerments of people who then get arrested and uh, have a long track record. And people, you know, it just amazes me how people jump on the bandwagon of anything slick or someone who makes ridiculous claims. And, you know, you get what you deserve if you do that kind of stuff. And, of course, maybe you get caught up in the moment of the promise of power. But you'll regret it. The quick road into the abyss is lined with gold. Gold and promises. Until you end up at the bottom of that abyss into the piss and shithole that it is... And you can't get out. So, but the whole world is like this. And uh, you have to be very careful who you get involved with, what is going on. If you're going to believe fools that tell you different things, gossipers and black lodgers who want to criticize others and attack them, and particularly, of course, the guild or other things. I mean, not that I really care, but, you know, people who believe that stuff deserve to go with those people, and we welcome go. But you have to be very careful whom you believe in, whom you follow, and that goes for everyone. I hope that the path given here proves itself to you, so it validates itself and has done that validation in your entire life. So whatever you have invested monetarily and in personal time is more than tripled or I think thousands of percent returns is what people get. And like everything in life, yes, there's a certain cost involved, but you know, a lot of that is also dependent upon your particular self because if you don't pay for something, you don't value it as well. And that's why people want to spend hundreds, if not thousands, buying all these fake charms all over the place. And I've gotten several people that have talked about that because there's con artists in uh, France and Germany as well as the United States who are selling fake charged items, some for thousands of dollars. And I guess they collect that money and then close their bank account or whatever they do, uh, if they get that at all. I find it hard to believe, but maybe somebody says, well, they're selling it for so much, it's got to be powerful. You know, these are unfortunate, uh, but uh, apparently there's a huge business with it. And these businesses of this fraudulent to products uh, are pretty, are, uh, the people doing this are actually uh, Black Lodge um, organized criminals. So it's a minefield out there. It's a minefield all in life. You know, people tell you all sorts of things uh, to basically get, money out of your pocket or to use you in every fashion. I mean, uh, I've seen this time and time again on every single level. Well, you know, if you take this course or you do this in terms of real world stuff, does it really give you a certificate that you need to get a particular job? Is a city college certificate going to do anything for you in any job? And what are you going to do with that once you get it? Is that going to be valid anywhere? You know, and there are even people, there are people with advanced degrees, MBAs, and even doctorates uh, that are unable to get jobs as well because maybe they're a little too old or maybe in this section. And then other people have these high paying jobs. So, I mean, it's, you know, it is such a difficulty and there's, you need help to go through life. What are people giving you? You know, if you take medication, 
happens, uh, that you don't read what the side effects are, good luck, baby. So many drugs in this day and age are psychoactive. They're working on brain centers to get effects. And the problem is, is that when they go wrong, they shut your brain off, which is called a grand mal seizure, where you just turn off the lights. And I'm talking, you don't know nothing. Click. Your brain goes off. Your consciousness goes off. You're in the abyss of nothingness. And you don't even know it. And let's hope you're not driving a car when that happens, or doing anything serious. So, the problem is, can you be an expert in anything? You go to a lawyer, does he know law? Well, he's got that certificate on the wall. Well, it don't mean much. So, you know, you end up having to be a lawyer, you end up having to be a doctor, you end up having to um, figure out how to survive in general. And how do you do all this? How do you become an expert in anything? It comes down to trust. You go to a doctor and you assume that he knows that. But, you know, a doctor could have failed, um, you know, gallbladders and liver in his medical school or got very bad grades on it. And then you, that's the problems you have. So he never really quite understood that. So, but he's going to treat you anyway because after all, he needs money. Lots of it. So here we go again. So the type of things that happen are so high-level evil, it's unbelievable. Uh, as what's happened with many people who get vaccinations, uh, uh, which even now are being required in some U.S. states, including the goofball state of California, which seems to have all these strange things happen in such a land of the fruits and nuts as everybody think it is. Um, except for all the military bases and government contractors and the right-wing nutjob uh, senators like Swatza Idiot and Ronald Boobhead Reagan. And there's numerous cases of children getting these shots who then go into these autistic things. It happened to uh, actress Jenny McCarthy, and I recommend everybody read her book to understand the toxicity of these things. And the things that are in vaccinations are appalling, and there's absolutely no proof that vaccinations work at all. Everybody thinks they do, but they don't. There's no proof that injecting yourself uh, with strains of certain uh, diseases uh, will prevent it or your body will build immune system to it. People think that happens. It's not true. The only thing proven with vaccinations is a certain percentage of people who are injected with a vaccination will get the disease from it. As a person who was vaccinated in the early 60s for all of these diseases from measles to everything else, Guess what? I got all those diseases. Didn't prevent a single one of them. Where was the antibodies built to stop all these? It doesn't work. It's nonsense. But that's not what they're going to tell you. When they inject you with all sorts of preservatives and mercuries and everything else, and all these things that are grown in green monkey kidneys, which are known to have AIDS and all sorts of these chronic uh, disease um uh, viruses and bacterias in there not to mention the fact that obviously they murdered a bunch of monkeys so that they can grow stuff because they're too stupid the medical industry to do anything without using some sort of natural animal which of course, are stupid critters that aren't anything like us, except we're going to test on them because they're kind of like us. Well, make up your mind, schmientists. And most likely, everybody around you will support these butchering, lying thieves, including your parents who are bought into the system and who will guide you 
into the minefield. I don't think they'll necessarily guide you through it. And all of us come very close to getting killed in that minefield, getting blown to smithereens. A lot of us get our arms and our leg blown off and things happen that are irreversible. So, who do you believe? Who do you follow? Well, this is the ultimate question. And how can you answer that question? And what will give you answers? And that is your internal, activated, empowered being called the inner magical being. This has to set off sirens. This has to tell you, look out, run. And, of course, you have to listen. So many people don't listen to the, quote, gut feelings they get, the intuition, the things that, you know, common society so believes in. And when you use more metaphysical terms, they have problems with that. And why wouldn't an advanced species have these kind of things and sensing abilities. It's absurd to think that that wouldn't be. So you've got to activate the inner magical being who has to start overriding that toxic, sewer, evil mind that is allowing you to be led by the nose into the bind field and leading you to a place that's going to blow you to smithereens. Now, your inner magical being is your only help. It's your only salvation. Once harm is done in many areas, it's very hard to survive it mentally and physically. So, getting more guidance, having the inner magical being as in control of your life is the ultimate way of figuring out what is going on, who is telling you the truth and who is not. And this is something that has to be. Because the mind is so much in control and has been for so many years and has kicked and shoved and beaten the inner magical being down, disconnecting from the mind is very difficult because it's con in control and it's a bully bastard that needs to be beaten. Or you're going to be a victim. You buy into the system. You buy into what they're going to tell you. You buy into their lies, their toxins. But, you know, then you go to the great alternative doctors whose prices are double regular doctors. And, of course, none of it's covered. You can go to a great little chiropractor who's usually, uh, in general, I found to be butchering bastards that hurt you more. And, of course, they have a shelf full of expensive expensive vitamins to give you, you know, double and triple the cost of the ones you can get in the um, supermarket that are just as good, if not better, than their professional grade. And they're willing to sell you hundreds and hundreds of dollars of that crap. So, uh, you run, or the old saying, you go from the frying pan into the fire because you think these are alternative people. The only alternative about them is the degree they have. They're still the same greedy, rotten bastards. And I've never had anybody that says, well, you know, if you can't afford this, you know, we'll give you a break, or I can do this for you, or I can do that for you. Never, never once. You know. Only... Only an acupuncture did that. An acupuncturist did that once who lowered his prices to make people able to afford it better. It was also the guy who was willing to go into the hospital uh, to assist, which took some balls. So 
So just remember, your whole life is walking through a minefield. And the only way you're going to be able to strut and move a little faster is when you have the inner magical being activated. And this is an ongoing process. You have to stop thinking. You have to start being. And this is a consciousness state. Now, this is what the guild system is all about, particularly the sigil system, which, and particularly in the handbook, which disconnects you from the, quote, matrix, connects you to the inner magical being, and your life starts to change. And it isn't a process that you have to concentrate on or think about or intellectualize. What's happening here? I need to know. What the hell do you know? You're going to judge what? You're, you're going to let your mind judge for you from the information that it has stored in it? From what society has fed you? Well, that's a real smart way to start doing things, boys and girls. No, you need to disconnect from that. You need to take control of the toxic mind and push it out of the way, kick it down and bring the inner magical being in so that your life can change. So you start making decisions that are from the higher self and as such you will find the few good doctors, the few good lawyers when the time comes. And you'll be able to make decisions if those are continuing to be productive in your life. But ultimately, hopefully you won't have need for much of these services in general. But you have to have that built-in bullshit detector in life. And that's what the inner magical being is. Is that person selling you a ridiculous product? Some resin filled with ground-up junk, a few herbs and some copper wires and stuff, and calling this some sort of uh, energy thing. Somebody's selling you a box that claims to do something. It's got dials on it because it's hooked up to some big giant thing of resin. <laughs> Does that make any sense to you? Now, if you buy into these kind of silly things, and of course, everybody's looking and experimenting, and you know, life is about that, but you have to be very careful that there isn't a big price you pay for that. And you know, seeking what is real, what is truth, is what the inner magical being does for you. And that's going to save your life. It's going to save your loved ones lies and it's going to make your life much much better and of course it's always difficult to keep this meter on the all on all the time to judge everything but you have to be in the groove you have to be tuned into that by clearing your consciousness with sigils and learning to be people don't understand meditation isn't meditating on something you know it's a common a misconception that people, I'm going to meditate on that. Meaning, what you're saying is you're going to think very hard or, or very detailed on that particular situation to figure it out. Well, that's not meditating. That's being analytical and problem solving, which may or may not uh, bear sweet fruit. Meditating is being in the zone of nothingness. It's thinking about nothing. It's turning the mind off. When you turn the mind off, the inner magical being takes over. It's really just as simple as that. But it's difficult to do because your mind is on and going and racing all the time and telling you complete garbage constantly. 
connecting into emotions and feelings, which most of them are not valid whatsoever or really don't have any meaning at all. Something that happened to you 20 years ago, uh, which is something that may be very negative to you and something that makes you very angry or hostile. Uh, does that have benefit now? Well, it doesn't. So why is it still affecting you? It's affecting you because your mind's telling you to be affected by it. And keeping it there. It's amazing how most people can't keep the facts or learn things that they need to, but if you were traumatized or upset by something 30, 40 years ago, you sure as hell remember that. That's how sick your mind is. You need to turn the mind off. That is what being centered is about. That's what using sigils, particularly in the handbook, is about. You disconnect, you activate, and then you connect to the streams of empowerment that the guild offers. And that is the only way. And while there may be lots of other little things that are interesting, that are good, it may even be helpful that you find around, uh, around and about, there, unless you have the core system and the core protocols going for you, which are not endless, once you have the system, you work with it. It's still all about disconnecting, reconnecting, and staying centered. And that's enough to keep most people busy for many lifetimes. And ultimately, life comes down to making the right decisions, which you can't do because your toxic mind is going to make you go into things that are not good for you because it'll be tied into emotion. You're going to buy into the get rich quick, the latest healing herb or supplement, uh, the jive your doctor tells you, the jive your lawyer tells you, the jive that society tells you the buffoonish, ignorant, low-life scum that were teachers in your entire life who taught nothing and supported a corrupt system and then gave you a certificate to say that we got gotcha. you. That's all what the mind is going to be based in and make you function and you need to break past that and everything that is this great learning thing the problem is will you survive that learning step and that that is a big thing to think about and if you make too many mistakes and you get trapped in systems and everything else and you know it serves somebody in the system you got to remember that you know people in jail it's an economy I mean you know all those people live off of that all the people that build the prisons, supply the prisons, occupy the prisons, the uh, lawyers that are involved with it, the police, the courts. It's an industry, baby. They're more than happy to take you, the piece of meat, and throw you in there. And people talk about all the costs of medical, but what would the doctors do if everybody was healed? So they don't care. Run you through the system, they get their X amount of bucks, it really doesn't matter what happens to you. You know, they're on the Riviera drinking martinis. And I've seen this time and time again, right down to fucking dentists who want to cheat you every time you go in there because you get, you know, your insurance pays a thousand dollars. So if you go to a dentist, he'll make sure that he does a thousand dollars worth of work on you. Yeah, they're all there to help you. <laughs> if you believe that, buddy, then I've got a bridge to sell you. You have to believe the opposite. And you've got to know how to do this without being stressed or confused or for somehow think this is negative. This is not negative. This is how the world works. And, you know, it's unfortunate that even myself wasn't taught this at a young age by the ignoramus parents, particularly my parents' generation who came up in paradise in the 
50s and 60s when everybody got jobs, everybody got great houses, and everybody could easily survive and somehow thought that life was perfect that way. And when that changed, of course, they already established their stuff and had a lot of it to some extent. And um, so they live in a fallout. And of course, they buy into the system. And of course, you don't want to criticize the system. They're part of it. But the problem is, is that those uh, fantasy times are over with and now you're stuck in the shit and you're going to sink deeper in that quicksand of shit until you're overcome by it. Unless you're smarter than that and you activate that inner magical being to guide you. And the processes are there. And... The illusion of it all is it's so damn easy. Because it's not a thinking process, it's a being process. And this is hard to describe in the thinking process of words, which is what words are. It's a thinking process that creates all these things. It's not a being process. And you know, you have to find yourself. And when, you're, when you find your inner magical being, it will make all these things happen and you will learn to be instead of think your way into something. Thinking hasn't really helped many people up to this stage. Thinking is just another sense. And where has thinking got to us? Has that created a great world? The great intellects? I don't see how that's helped much. You need to go way beyond thinking from the program toxic mind if we are going to solve your problems and if you're going to reach high states of empowerment and know where you're going. You make the right decisions. You are guided properly. And that's what empowerment ultimately is all about. Now, you can be more direct and you can use psychic influencing and use psychic sensing and you can use sorcery. And these are all ways of overcoming the toxic mind crippling you. But it's a temporary stage that the inner magical being has to be activated to move to the next level. That's ultimately the secret of everything. And is anything that you learn from the guild, that's what you need to learn. And once the inner magical being... It, being is in power, then you will be guided and things will come to you. And uh, often called synchronicities, things will learn that are best for you and everyone has a certain amount of individual path. While the guild teaches a good firm foundation, there's all sorts of offshoots to that that you incorporate into the original foundation because it's very important to keep that pure, original, empowered foundation. But you may find something works for you and additionally that you integrate in. That's how life is. And that's how the inner magical being will guide you. As well as being guided by the streams of empowerment. And all these things are, you know, but you can't be hooked up to uh, streams of empowerment unless your inner magical being does it. And that's what the different things we do. It's about connecting these streams to your inner magical being. It's not connecting it to your mind. It's not connecting it to your auras or chakras. These are just primitive machine elements of the occult bodies. Uh, we're connecting it to the ultimate higher consciousness state, the inner magical being. It's as simple and as complicated as that. And it's all about being balanced. It's all about being centered. And it's all about being in general. So, as usual people, there is no reality until the occult scientist creates it. Question everything, believe nothing. And may the gods keep your sword arm strong.